of this week in Metropolis. Yeah, King P here. And Stelio7. And welcome to another episode of This Week in Metropolis. Yeah, this week is the final episode of Season 4. And coming up on today's show, we have got um, talk of the next-gen consoles from this week. And also, uh, living on the moon is, is another topic we'll be covering. Uh, and also, movies we should have seen. And to, to round us off, um, useless gaming accessories. That's another thing we'll be uh, covering in today's show. But I'll, I'll kick us off, Matt, this week has been a little bit stressful for both of us, probably more so okay. for you, uh, linked to the release of the new Xbox, the Series X. Um, obviously, I've mentioned uh, on previous shows that I was swaying more to switching allegiance from PlayStation to the new Xbox. Um, I have this week um, made a dramatic U-turn. What I mean, it's um, yeah another conundrum in my own mind of whether to change or not. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you for why I have changed. One, I feel like it might be a bit too much hassle <laughs> switching, right. like setting up a new account. And oh. Oh, oh, do you know what? Even down to... <laughs> Even down to this show, right? We, when we come on, we introduce ourselves by our our usernames that we we tend to use for all of our personal accounts and things like Steelio Seven. My surname Steel Steely was my nickname at school. O Seven was because I couldn't have Steely Seven when I got my first um, setup of a of an email account or or my gaming tags and things like that. So Steelio Seven has always stuck with me as I couldn't have Seven, so I went for O Seven. Nothing to do with James Bond, um, which is that be Devlo Seven exactly. But um, <laughs> so I know for a fact that I can't have Stelio Seven on Xbox because oh, yeah. no. Well, when I briefly for about a year had an Xbox, uh, I want to say I had did I have a three six? I can't even remember what Xbox I had, but I had an Xbox um, many moons ago. And I remember I had to set up and, it, and I couldn't have Stelio 7. I ended up having some long-winded one, which wasn't that fun. Um, and I know people are a little bit more creative with their um, usernames and things like that now. But but yeah, so I was thinking about that. And, and the big draw for me was the controllers, the, the new PlayStation controllers. I don't, I don't know why I wasn't more aware of what's going on, because I think, again, we mentioned about Xbox, they've still actually come with battery-operated ones where you've got mm. to change the batteries, which to me seems so dated now. a separate kit. Yeah, which is another... It to do it. Exactly, yeah. it's another £25, £30 uh, UK sterling. But, um, but the new PlayStation controller, um, is it haptic? Is that mm. the word I'm, I'm looking for? Yeah. Um, so so even down to and there, there's a pre-installed game on the console which it comes with where you're kind of this little um avatar roaming around and even down to like where you're running there'll be small pulses through the controller not just a dual shock you know not just it's they said you literally feel things in that controller if you're in snow if you're you know on the hard surface it, it varies, turns ice cold um, <laughs> you get frostbite but, so that's one thing i think wow that's that's really good and another thing is the the triggers on there they're actual tension triggers so if you're in a game where say i don't know i'm, I'm thinking like um i think the examples i've read about if you're um sort of bow and arrow that's what i was thinking or, or that, something that, yeah, like so that the that's tension the, the of a bow thing, when you're it? pulling it back yeah. it actually reacts on the controller as well which just mind-blowing really yeah. like you know that's and and I, I watched this uh video review of of one of the consoles the other day and and the guy was saying like what's the thing you interact with most when you're on a gaming console it's the controller 
you know, yeah. yes, exactly. yes, the console looks hideous and like a, a massive router, but realistically, the thing that you're interacting most with is your controller. It's got a built-in mic on it, so you don't even need a headset anymore. You can still use a headset, but for the interaction, I, I, I mean, wonder how well that would work, though, mm-hmm. in, in terms of the. Um, I don't know. I just think, yeah, if you've got sort of sound coming from your telly and, and the round and that, how well it would isolate that, I don't know. Obviously, no, no thought about it a bit more, yeah. haven't they? And yeah, yeah. My, but, my two seconds of opinion. But, <laughs> so. but, I mean, that that's a big thing. I mean, the exclusives that are on there, I mean, I've, I've said it before, I'm, I'm not that bothered about what the exclusive are, but I think because me and my son watched um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse recently, um, which has just gone on to Netflix, and it's just given me a whole kind of little buzz about that game, uh, yeah. Miles Morales' um, Spider-Man, which is is the kind of exclusive on launch day with the PS5. And I didn't even play the last Spider-Man game, but I know that was an incredible game as well. Um, it's just made me think. Oh, I think maybe I'll stay well, loyal. And it's, it's it's going back to exactly what we said. I mean, I've been a PlayStation user since the first console i know you've been xbox since the first one since the first xbox and, and yeah, that's, that's and, and i think it it's really a big decision really of it's it's not just about loyalty to it but what the pros and cons are of each console and i think for xbox it's mainly kind of you, the online side of xbox is huge yeah. where i think playstation's still a little bit behind on that but for me personally the games that i tend to play aren't necessarily online games so i think it does probably fit with rather than trying to adapt to something not that it would take a lot to change i mean the console is console at the end of the day yeah. and there's not a great deal of difference other than a few of the exclusives really but the controller for me sounds that does sound next gen to me yeah, but but tell the listeners and the viewers uh, of of your pains that you've had this week. Well, normally I would never imagine about to sort of buying a, a console on on release day, but this year I decided that that was a brilliant idea to do so, and and it's I was already late to the party in regards to I didn't pre order. You know, it was a pre order. I think the twenty second September that completely passed me by. I read about it after the fact and thought, oh, yeah, I should have. Should have done that. So yesterday, yeah, yesterday, decided to try and do it. And and honestly, it is the single-handedly one of the most stressful things I've tried to do in my life. Like it, it just ridiculous. Just that whole thing. What what makes me so frustrated is like that feeling of helplessness. And I managed to miss like every single sort of store that had it. So you know, I'd be, I was on John Lewis's website at eight o'clock in the morning. It said, this will be released at 8 a.m. in red letters. Great. Refreshed it, still saying the same. Refreshed it, still saying the same. About six minutes later, I realised that the out of stock had changed to add to basket. Same colour, same font, same everything. So I probably missed that. By the time I tried to add it, didn't work. Then, you know, missed out on, I think, Very Haddam. was about 10 minutes too late for seeing wow. that. Um, someone else had a maybe. As the added to basket got right through to the payment stage the website like literally payment approved blah 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 just waiting for that next message to say congratulations you know your order's been approved website goes down you know and it it was just like this constant chase that, that i wasn't winning and what makes it more frustrating is the fact that you know there are not that i'm you know the pulling the um sympathy vote here but there are lots of people and you saw it a lot on twitter there are lots of genuine people that are trying to get these consoles um for whatever reason it may be but there are also a lot of people that are getting them purely to sell them and and the the sad thing is is they're doing it because they can and you see on um you then see on eBay, people are bidding like well over six hundred, eight hundred pounds mm. on something that would have cost them four hundred and fifty. Yeah, and people are making a killing on it. Yeah. But it's that moral thing of well, you know, there are people struggling to get it, but then there are other people who are clearly getting them, but not not for the right reasons. It, do you know what it made me think of, Matt? As well, the the whole argument of um, 
buying something to then sell it for a profit. Yeah. We we talked about in a previous show with the the trainers you bought from yeah. the alien ones, which or I don't think that we actually made it into the show. At that bit of um, conversation, right. well, I think I may have taken that out. Um, there's I mean, to the, the only time there's a huge culture of reselling trainers, you know, and and it annoys me in that sense as well. That there are lots of shoes that now you can only get. Like the Nike or whoever will release so few of them, so there's hype, and then they will. It's either a raffle-based system or it's like a lottery thing, and and very few people can, can get them. But if you're so inclined, you can buy bots to do it for you, and they work sort of millisecond fast. Add to basket, blah blah blah. Do the payment, bang. So they can beat any anyone in doing it, and there's a huge culture of that in. In trainers, and the, and the only time I've ever sort of done that is there was a, a pair of trainers from the film Alien, they Reebok Alien Stompers, and then the ones at Ripley in um, Alien War, and they were in this box with all the and came with all the different badges from the the film, like the Nostromo spaceship and all this stuff, amazing looking set, and I bought them, and they were almost knee height. Which was the weird thing about them. I bought them because they were cool, and then you're putting them on, and like they're, they're like these knee height boots, um, which isn't necessarily a look that I'd, I would go for. <laughs> um, but so putting them on, the, the wife, you know, was the voice of reason, like, when are you going to wear those? You'll look like an idiot, so on and so on. So sold, ended up selling them. But, you know, that was an example of, I think I bought them, let's say, on the Monday for £110. And then by the Wednesday, I'd sold them for about 400 mm. you know, and, and four times your money just for the sake of listing it on eBay, you know, buying something, listing it on eBay. You can see why people do it. You know, if you could have got one of those Xbox consoles and you knew someone was going to pay double. You know. and, well, this, this, and it's this, not illegal. You it's know, not it's, illegal. It's the crazy thing either. No. If, I, I think you know, there was lots of people on Twitter yesterday going, well... I don't think eBay should let people do it. You know, I, I don't think eBay should let people sell for uh, particularly a brand new thing two or three times. But uh, I don't know. I guess there's an argument against. It's like people that were selling anti-back sort of hand yeah. stuff and that at the under beginning the, under of the lockdown. Under the current prices, yeah. You yeah. know, selling a 60p bottle for a fiver or whatever. It's mm. People do, don't they? I think what it does, and, and a few people have said this, to me is it brings into question the kind of companies like Microsoft mm-hmm. and Sony who are who are selling these at a certain time of year where kids and, and adults alike and fans of gaming will be desperate to get one. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and parents will be desperate to get them for the time of year that they've come out. It's you know exactly. a couple of months before Christmas. Um, and it's the frustrating thing is that there is only limited supplies and we talked about it off air um about do you know as frustrating it is it's it's actually clever from them yeah. but at the same time it's it's kind of like you don't really want to kind of congratulate them on their marketing plan they know exactly oh. what they're doing because we've got black friday on the horizon as well coming towards the end of this month so they'll be they'll definitely be stock that will all of a sudden appear of and course, be able yeah. then um, and, and the other flip side to it as well is, I, I think you said to me, there's the people that were, when this next batch came available from yesterday morning, they weren't actually due to be shipped probably until the end of December mm, so, yeah. at, the, at the latest. So, you know, you, you're probably better off waiting until the new year anyway. Well, there were um, some people saying as well that, um, and again, that, like you said, that this is perfect marketing for uh, Microsoft and PlayStation, because you think like yesterday, Microsoft probably for uh, 48 hours they were one of the top trends on Twitter. Like uh, on the news, you you they were saying about the console launch. It's everywhere. Um, but there was lots of people. The negative sort of feedback was on like you said, game yesterday released some more consoles, a mm. small amount of them. Um. But you wouldn't have got them for till December the eighteenth. So you're buying like you're almost pre ordering after the pre orders have happened. Yeah. But there were some people saying on Twitter yesterday that Ned ordered in September, were told that you know, it, it was gonna come for launch day. Um but then 
they would receive in an email in the middle of yesterday saying, oh, actually, by the way, you're not going to get it till December. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's crazy in, in that regard as well, that even if you were on the um, sort of a, on top of your game and pre-ordered two months ago, it's no guarantee you're going to get it anyway. So, yeah, why, why don't you wait until um, sort of the new year and probably get it walk into your local shop by then and, and just get it then. But. Well, this is this is the thing as well, and a lot of people are saying that, that yeah, probably better to wait until the new year mm. as well when, you know, Xbox especially, because I think Halo was going to be their kind of uh, release day yeah. game, but that's been postponed and set back. So mm. you've only really got a few games which are cross-platform anyway, uh, are available on both, and also... Or... or older games you know because you have got especially for xbox all the back catalog as well so the interesting thing sort of aside from the hardship of not being able to buy one the interesting thing that i did see repeatedly um was people saying if you're buying it for a christmas present make sure you plug it in first because it's apparently straight out of the box it's not ready to go it needs a 60 gig update before you can even use the thing, God. which I'm sure will probably be the same with a PS5 as well. Yeah, yeah. My God, 60 gig! I've got to sit there and wait, wait for that, that to download. Make sure you switch off all other Wi-Fi accessories just to make sure that you're uh, yeah. getting the top speed for your console. It's but um, yeah, well, watch this space. I mean, this is the last episode of this series, so um, we're going to be taking a couple of weeks off. To, to refresh and, and start planning for, for the next series. But um, when I come back, I'll probably be back to uh, wanting to get the Xbox again. So you'll we'll, have one of each. Um, we'll have an update when, when we come back. But um, Matt, you've seen some interesting um, non-gaming news this week. Yes, indeed. Um, so we've talked before about um, SpaceX and those sort of things and, and plans to um, colonise other planets and so on. And it's an interesting story uh, regarding a UK firm as well. We're, we're based in the UK, so it's always interesting seeing these things, particularly concern, concerning UK businesses. Um, what they've worked out how to do, and, and it's solving a problem of, if you're going to space, you're, you've obviously not, you know, it's hard to get there. So but if you're going to, this is concerning the moon. To get to the moon, you need to fly up in a rocket. You've not got a huge amount of storage space. And if you... And the more you take, the more fuel you need, and so the more expensive it is. There's a company that's worked out um, that they can turn moon rock, um, just normal moon rock, there's an abundance of it on the um, moon, and turn it into both oxygen and metals. So you could c- create a supply of oxygen that you could then use, you know, obviously humans need it to uh, exist in that particular place. Um, 45% of moon rock is just oxygen, so you can use that as a resource. The remaining um, sort of portion of the rock, though, is uh, a combination of, let me just uh, find the exact metals. I think I said to you earlier, um, aluminium, iron, and other types of metals. Um, so once you've got the oxygen out, you're left with all this metal that you can then potentially use for building stuff for example which i think is fantastic so you know really you need to go there with the basic tools but ultimately you've you've got a great deal of what you need actually in on the moon that's fascinating as well but mm. i guess it shows kind of you know how, <clears throat> how far science has come in that respect and research into these things and and yeah. the you know just the the possibility of of traveling to the moon as frequently as as we do or certainly sending things up there to um research and bring back samples of of the rock and things like that so um, yeah. no, well, they're, they're planning on to apparently i mean in this article it mentions is it, it as well um that nasa and other space agencies are planning to establish a permanent lunar base or moon mm. village and um, where nations will operate alongside private companies on critical technologies such as life support habitat construction, energy generation, and food. So, yeah, it, in, in a way, like they've got the space station now, they'll they'll have a, or even, you know, close to home in the North Pole, and they've got a, an outpost where, where people are. Yeah, you, you'll have that set up, which is incredible. That's to, mad. To is there a time frame on when they think that? 
Um, no, it doesn't doesn't say in this particular article and time frame, but it's it's something that they're developing at present. We uh, we have we have touched on um, space travel before, and whether you'd want to be okay. one of the first to go up there and colonize a, another planet. It does say returning humans to the moon as early as twenty twenty four, four wow. years time. And and the interesting thing is only tw- the moon is two hundred and twenty miles from Earth. So I mean, it's achievable. It's achievable. Well, you think from what? How far is London from yeah, where it's we about live? Yeah, hundred and five miles. Probably the equivalent. Like yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Crazy. there and back. Yeah. If you if you could go, and you could take any item with you, what would it be? See, I would always imagine the moon as being quite, uh, you know, it's, it's quite barren, isn't it? There's not a lot there. I'd like to be cosy, like your duvet or something like that would, <laughs> would be a preferred choice. But probably the, the main thing that really, if I was anywhere, that brings you that, gives you the ability to do whatever you want and also you have that security it would uh, ridiculously probably be my computer yeah. if i could take my computer and i i've got games on it i've got access to the world <laughs> imagine uh, but imagine that you you go to a new planet to play a game yeah i was it. thinking I'll... exactly the same though it would either be a ps5 or a uh or an Xbox, but then I would need a TV to go with me. So yeah, you might, have a TV. Might be a lot. To, <laughs> I'll just take the laptop then. Um, the laptop. No, but you, you know, most people would probably say something like their phone or something like that. Because yeah. I was thinking maybe a camera. I've got a I, camera on my phone to take pictures yeah. of it. I, I know what you mean though. With you, that thought of it being sparse and you know not not a great deal there. But and and almost in my head, I feel like the moon is that small that you'd be able to just see over the edge like and then it goes do you know what <laughs> in my head is. but this is what i mean like I, I do in my head it's like <laughs> it's that you know it's that round small round dot in the sky it's not like it's and i'm sure the same would be thought if we were on another planet looking yeah, at earth looking or whatever us, but it's yeah. it's that kind of I, I mean i'm not it's definitely smaller than the earth so is it all bits here but so i don't know how. i reckon i could walk it in you know walk around the whole moon for eight minutes yeah oh uh, yeah if i had a nice jog on but gravity issues you know it might yeah. slow me down a bit but yeah interesting <laughs> those yeah but well, it's, a, it's another example of one of those things where you think you know where, when you was little or whatever thinking wow being an astronaut imagine that mm. and and it's it's very quickly becoming I think since private companies have been involved, there's a lot of money in it. Like rather than with, with a government agency, there's always that sort of limit, like NASA and, and stuff like that. But now all these private companies are, are developing stuff. It, it's it's amazing. Mm. I guess the the question is, what are the um, you know the disadvantages of it? If if you've got a private company and they're gonna really screw up the moon in in some way, I guess that's a danger as well, isn't it? it- yeah it's i mean it's it's certainly something i mean you and i both moved from and and the same applies on earth really we both moved from built up areas in 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 and around london um and we've moved to norfolk out in east anglia near the coast where when i moved up here or even when i started coming up this way you know everywhere was green you know Mm. there's there's a lot more green land where things aren't you know even where i live yeah. yeah, even where I live now, in the 10 years that I've lived in Norfolk, there's so much more change with regards to the amount of houses that have been built on a lot of that yeah. green space. And that's one thing, you know, you kind of look at something like the moon. And yes, I think it's good for research purposes. And there could be a lot more we could discover if we did have a, a more permanent base up there. Yeah. But to turn it into something, like you say, which could actually be detrimental to it. Yeah, well, no, um, I think I've said this on the previous episode, but um, it was Jeff Bezos, uh, the founder of Amazon. I'm sure he was quoted in saying that to keep the planet in as best a condition as possible, you should do all manufacturing off world. So mm-hmm. like you could use the moon full of factories and, and have it as like this industrial complex mm. that made all the stuff that, you know, is it is a bit dodgy making for environmental reasons on this country and then they ship it to the you know earth mm. 
So your your Amazon parcel was coming from the moon. You might, you might not get next day. Then. Next day would be a push. Prime, it, Prime might be pretty pointless. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> that, I mean, yeah, I I can see that. But then surely, I mean, isn't there? Doesn't the moon some way kind of uh, impact on? tidal way and not mm. tidal waves but the sea in general yeah it does i don't know exactly how it works no. but it, there is that sort of thing happening. i'm not that clever to know but i'm, I'm no. definitely sure so this is what i'm saying like if there's something that could impact on the moon as as a whole yeah that is going to have some sort of impact elsewhere and that's yeah kind of uh where my thought was on that but yeah and then probably it affects that you don't know until mm. you do it and really until you do it, it yeah. yeah yeah maybe go to another planet let's try mars yeah. um it's miles up first that's further away yeah that shouldn't hopefully have any impact <laughs> unless there's some sort of life form that's then going to come and attack us but let's see <laughs> um changing gear slightly we've had um some questions come in over the last week um one from steve from scw the wrestling channel steve's obviously been a guest on our show before uh sent in an interesting question which you and i done a bit of research on Mo- in a nutshell his question was movies that we should have seen so but haven't but haven't and 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 to clarify i, I don't think it was necessarily any th- any film but we were to 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 give us a bit of an idea we actually searched the top 100 films which was on empire is that right going to empire magazine yeah. to empire. so we had a look through i'm really pleased to say that the film that came i said to you before we'd even looked at the list for me is actually the number one film on there. So, um, yeah. it is, it's, that, quite that's a a pretty, it's a good one to fail on, yeah. isn't, isn't it? It's the, it's the way to look at it. Yeah. I was really impressed. Like, the, this question for me the, is, is a very good one for me because, mm. um, quite often in conversation, people condemn me for not seeing films. And, and normally their films the list that is I long. Think, I think, why, why, why are you judging me for not watching that? The prime example that we always talk about, The Lion King, the original animated Lion King, never yeah. seen it. Yeah. Um, and there are quite a few Disney films of that era that I didn't see just because I was a bit too old. Um, so, yeah, it's quite good um, uh, to pose that question. But I was impressed that, you know, based on that and people judge me for not seeing films, I've probably seen the whole top 20 mm. films that you should have seen. So, amazing. Yeah. But the, the number one film on there is The Godfather, and that's the one that oh, I haven't seen any of them. Um, I've not seen and, the third one, but that's meant to be a bit rubbish anyway. Uh, I don't think it was in the top 20. No, it certainly wasn't. Yeah. I've I seen one Godfather, and two. Godfather ones. 2 was in the top yeah. 20, I believe. But yeah, it's it's a film that um, it's just it's one that everyone knows of. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with it. I know exactly what it's about. Um, I've seen bits and pieces of it usually in other shows where they're talking about it or whatever. Um, and it's one that it's one that I do want to watch um, and just haven't got around to it. It's just one of them things like, and, and I'm sure you're the same, where you, you look at some of these films on that list that you go, oh, I haven't seen that. Mm. Yeah, I want to see it. It's not that there's nothing about it that interests me. Not like me. you're choosing not to. It's yeah, just you it's, haven't. It's just yeah. you haven't, yeah. And, and I mean, I can think back to one that I always wanted to watch, which was Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, and I've never seen that. There you go. Well, so there you go. The Again, it was a film that I really wanted to see. It was bought for me. I had a copy of it for about five years. Um, Mark got it for me. Yeah. So, um, and then eventually I did watch it. Um, but The Godfather's one that is on my, my list of films i need to watch what was you i know there was a couple on there that we spoke about but i i think i know well, where you go the, the key one which i think um which interested i said to you um i've been watching sopranos um recently i'm sort of up to season four on sopranos and there's a, a character in it called ralphie who is not a particularly nice person but he loves this particular film and keeps quoting it and sort of using it as examples of certain things um so I keep thinking to myself, yeah, I really need to watch that because it's meant to be good. But it never appealed to me. And that's Gladiator, um, which is one that people <laughs> hold in such high regard. Like, oh, yeah. my God, this is such an amazing film. I just never fancied it. It is just one of those ones that I thought, man, just don't, don't really fancy that for some reason. It, I'm sure it, if I watch him, I think that's really good. 
But yeah. is there is there a reason that sort of film wouldn't be of interest? I know there's types of films that people Roman don't like. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Romans. <laughs> uh, Romans. Yeah. yeah. I'm not very good with and uh, no, it's not really the same. Um, but sort of period drama, like oh, right. it, it, it's probably my least favourite genre, like Downton Abbey or something like that. Not that I'm saying that Gladiator is the same as Downton Abbey. Just trying to think. I but, can't see the comparison, but I know what you mean. The fact that it's Dated. themed around this historical period, yeah. it just doesn't instantly uh, appeal. I, th- I think I but really, that's... really liked Gladiator because before that, I believe Troy, the film, had, had been released. Right. I'm pretty sure it was before, which was... Brad Pitt, um, God, who else was in? He, Brad Pitt played Achilles. I mean, I love that film. I don't know if you've seen that. But that's uh, really good. The story of Troy. More than stuff or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like Gladiator is awesome. Yeah, it's got such an amazing. That, I can't cast remember what number it was in the top one hundred. Um, I've just looked at it. It's forty-four. Forty-four. I mean, it shows you there must be some high-profile films. Where was The Lion King? You, you did the Lion King one. was really high, I think, wasn't it, in, in this film? It was on the it? list. It was definitely on the list. Um, see, that and that's one. 29, The Big Lebowski. Never seen that. People always rave about The Big Lebowski and how good that is. Mm. Um, the other ones that I sort of made note of, Saving Private Ryan. Again, a film that people regard as Very sort of good. such a good film. I think I've seen the beginning where they're, they're all being sort of blown to pieces on the beach. Uh, I think I've seen that bit, but in regards to the rest of it, no. It's it's quite. I mean, they're quite heavy films because mm. obviously there's a there's obviously a historical link to a lot of them as well, and they're they're taken from people's stories, which which can be quite heavy for people to watch if they're affected by them sorts of things. No, um, Lion King was number seventy, so it went as mm. high as uh, I thought. But that's the thing, and I think, you know, you saying about um, The Godfather as well, I mean, The Godfather, what's that? It's probably about three hours a, a, mm. a piece, isn't it? It's not a, it's not one of those where you think, oh, yeah, I'll just watch that. And, light, a light watch. Yeah. yeah. The thing I found with The Godfather, I don't think I've still got them on DVD, but I remember watching those, particularly two, because so two is incredible, um, where he, he goes back to, so it's all about his home country in Italy and stuff like that. And it was a, the weird sensation of finishing watching that film and just thinking, that was incredible. And I can't think of anything negative about it. Mm. Right? And that was really odd. Because like, normally you'll watch a film and we, get, we go to the cinema and you come out and be like, oh, I like that bit. I didn't like that bit. Weren't sure about this. Weren't sure about what they did. I couldn't. I, I, I just couldn't think, well, that was a bit rubbish, wasn't it? It was just... <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. just amazing. There are so many incredible scenes in it. Mm. But, but yeah. for any listeners, I mean, tell us yours. I mean, Steve, get in touch with us. Tell us what, mm. you, what film. I know Steve at the moment is watching a load of um, older films, um, some that he's even said he has seen when he was younger and um, probably didn't appreciate as much. But if, if uh, any of the listeners want to tell us some other films that they should have seen, get in touch. Yeah, definitely. But while so, we're on the subject of questions, Matt, well, that brings us to another question um, that has, was forwarded us from uh, my other friend, James, um, from uh, Goosepipe Gaming. And he's uh, sent us a, a gaming related question, which I think is a very interesting one, which is, um, can you tell us about any useless gaming accessories that you've ever bought? Which mm. is uh, which is a good one, because I mean, you mentioned controllers earlier that usually yeah. so with, with a lot of consoles you'll get in a standard controller and that's you know pretty much what you you'll stick with unless it goes wrong or, or you need to mm. sort of you know change it for whatever reason um i think in in answer to the question for for myself I, I think the standout ones for me and this is all going back a while um i remember having the original game boy so the the black and white game yeah. boy yeah. before that they put a color screen or backlit screen it didn't have a backlit screen so you had to, um, if you wanted to play anything but really good light, you were absolutely doomed. And they sold this thing, which was sort of like a, a square lens that went over the screen with this huge battery pack on the back of it, which then added a light 
so no, you can play it. Did in, it have a magnifier as dog. well on it? Yes, I believe. I, it I remember that as well. I remember that. And it was this terrible. Only it served a purpose because it sort of worked. But mm. I remember this thing went through batteries. Yeah, you know, you'd be lucky to get half oh, now probably out of it. And it, it used of like four AA batteries in it. It's such a beast, and you know, took it away from being portable or whatever. Yeah, I remember that being a awful. Except it worked, but. Right. God. Yeah, no, that's good. That's a that's a good shout. That I mean, I really struggled with this question. It's a great question. I'm not really one for buying additional accessories for my consoles. The one that I do remember was having a a separate like with the PlayStation Three. I remember ordering it. It was probably about thirty quid as well. It was um like a like a, a Blu-ray player remote. So it was a big old remote, yeah. and you could operate it. L- but there was more buttons needed than needed. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, now I still play Blu-rays or, or DVDs or whatever on my PlayStation 4. Um, and I just use the, the normal controller. Yeah. But I remember having this big, chunky controller for the PS3, which really was, was pointless. But also, one that always stands out for me is when I um, lived in Essex, I, I'd done a house share with a friend who had a uh, Nintendo Wii. Which at the time was brilliant. I thought it was that was kind of different to, compared to yeah, everything no, else that was on the very, market. Very but it slowly they they just started bringing out different kind of gadgets to go for to, for your controller to fit in. So you'd have like a steering wheel, yeah. or you, you'd have some. I'm sure there was loads of other things as well. But it soon became apparent that it didn't really matter what no, it was in. That's it. You could literally. I mean, really. I liked getting involved and playing the tennis and things like that on there. But realistically, you could lay down on the sofa not even looking at the screen and, and just Jen kind of just flick your wrist. Through your wrist. <laughs> yeah, and, and even driving games or whatever, you did, really didn't need to. So there was a lot of pointless additional things that you could put the controller in. Did you have a Wii? Well, yeah, and we, we actually got you saying um, about those sort of things. We bought recently for the Switch... Um, Mario Tennis, which mm-hmm. is which is awesome game, um, but it, it, just as partner, we, we bought it from a, a friend, and and they included in it these um, bracket attachments. Wow! So like the um, the switch controller fits in the bottom with them, and then you use this tennis racket again. Completely pointless because you yeah. you can just do it without. But, but yeah. I don't know whether it's the same. But on the switch as well, there's that kind of ring. Um, yeah, accessory, no, which fitness looks pretty thing, cool. isn't it? Fitness ring. Yeah. I don't know I whether that's, that's got the a same. purpose because that's got resistance, I think, isn't right. it? Right. Yeah, I'd, I'd be intrigued to see what they're like. Mm. But um, yeah, again, like really good question because I'm sure there are loads of different. I mean, I was again, we, we, we'll come back around full circle here, but the PS4, looking at the different things that you can get with that, um, yeah. you know, you've got the camera that you can buy, which will go with something. There's the headset and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, different. Even the Xbox, there's. I didn't even know this. With the Xbox, there's a um, an elite controller. Mm. That yeah, that's been out for a little while now. I mean, it, it it looks incredible. I mean, but in the pack, you've got different um, thumb sticks yeah. attachments that you, you can, can change, change it to. All the bits. Yeah, and really just terrible. the quality of it feels according to the review. It's about hundred hundred and thirty quid or something. I mean, that's mega money. Yeah, that's mega. The, the amazing accessory that Xbox do. Um, it is for um, people with sort of physical disabilities and things like that. And so the, the buttons on it are really large. The buttons are, are sort of, I don't know, 10 centimetres wide. So the, uh, people of all abilities can play. That's, that's, really, that's good. really cool. That's um, good. I just remembered in, in terms of other software, I've got a, a long history of weird additional controller things. I remember from the Dreamcast having a keyboard full-size qwerty keyboard which i got just because you could get it don't know why i think i think it cost a five or something <laughs> is when when they were going out of, i've never used it because what do you need a full-size full qwerty keyboard for a dreamcast for um i remember having on the playstation 2 uh there was a God, was it def jam made a rap game there's some sort of rap game and Basically, it was karaoke. Yeah. So you'd you'd seen this video. It was like an animated video that they'd done with the words up, and you had a microphone, and you could rap along. I, I remember having that. I remember. Um, that. And also on the PS2, 
do you, I don't know what was he called Buzz is this funny sort of egg shaped sort of character and it you got um, little buzzers. It was it was a red button at the top and then colour buttons down the side. Right. And you all sat there with it and it came up the question. You pressed your buzzer to answer the question and things. All these sort of weird things. Mad. But they're probably the highlight, switching the, the thing on its head, highlight controller for me was on the GameCube, um, the bongos for Donkey Konga. Did you ever play that? Oh, I didn't. I didn't know they had that. It is worth buying a GameCube for... Basically, the game was a bit like, you know, Guitar Hero, you press the yeah. button in time. Um, but this was sort of, you know, the left and right bongos, real bong, like proper little plastic bongos. And you drummed along to, to the songs and it had like well-known songs yeah. on there. And you'd sit there just sort of drumming away in time, oh, pre- pressing what you wanted. Incredible. I mean, I was going to say mine would have to be, for one that I've actually had, would be Guitar Hero. Cause, and I wasn't very good at it, yeah. but it was, it kind of, I, I loved it because not, not just the, I mean, the actual equipment is pretty basic when you think about what you're doing. Yeah. But just the game it in just general. Works, isn't yeah. It? And I think that was around a time as well when at arcades, you had all the dance machines and things like that. So it was a similar kind of making yeah. sure you hit the, the right tune and c- colour and all that stuff. Rock band as well on the Xbox. That was, I mean, played it. It was incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really that is good. a game that I think they should bring back. For uh, next going back gen. to next gen. Next mm. gen. Bring back a you know an amazing wireless guitar thing. Um, it's so simple, but people would love it. I'd love it. I'd buy that. And I know my boys would absolutely love you know playing. It's one, it's one that gets whatever. everyone get gets involved. And and th- this is the thing. Rock band itself. I've played around people's houses when there's been like a party or, yeah. you know, a, a gathering or whatever. And it's just been so much fun. You've had someone singing, someone on the drums or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. It is brilliant. I do and get that... unbearably competitive with it, though. It's <laughs> the issue. <laughs> just taking people out with your guitar. <laughs> yeah. No, it just oh. becomes boring because, you know, three hours later, because someone, you know, it's that constant one-upmanship of, they, they got it slightly better than I did. So I've got to play it again. And yeah, it's all Brilliant. good fun though. Well, I think that brings us uh, to the end of uh, the series. Yeah, it's it it's does. been, a, been a, a long journey and an exciting one, this series, um, to do 10 episodes. So, you know, thank you to everyone that's listened and taken part. As always, we will take a couple of weeks off to plan and plot and put together the. Um, special ingredients for the the next series yep. coming in the meantime um make sure you you keep following us we will be posting updates uh on our social media um so give us a follow on instagram facebook twitter um youtube as well make sure you subscribe to us on there make sure you share the channel to your friends and family who might be interested in listening as well that's that's obviously um, you can see us as well as hear us yeah exactly but that's the most important thing for us getting listeners to our show and, and sharing the love so um make sure you do thanks again for the people who got involved in today's show and sending in their questions please send in more we'll, we'll happily answer and give you our um our answers on on the next series cool and thank you very much and goodbye goodbye <laughs>